Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all nurturers. Amen. 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 What is a mother? Amen. <laughs> From the biblical perspective, a mother is a nurturer. A nurturer. So I just want to wish all the nurturer through the realms, and especially in the body of Christ, happy Mother's Day. I agree. You know, God has placed within Adam. God, when God made man, man is very task oriented. He's very protective, task oriented, provider, provision, etc. Because God made everything, then He made somebody to take care of it. Man is very managerial. Bottom line, his mind worked very um, systematic from a managerial standpoint. But after God had made everything and he made the man to manage everything, he kind of got like, well, who will take care of the man? Who will nurture him? If he's taking care of everything, the Bible said, you understand? God said, he has no help, but there's nobody to take care of him. So a man is wired to constantly be objective, seeing what needs to be done, etc. In doing so, a lot of times he neglect taking care of himself and some of the other things. This is where God made a woman. Our greatest power is nurturing. I share a little testimony with you. You guys don't know this. I was having a wonderful conversation with my um, sister. We were discussing a subject, a matter. And when I finished, God go, are you forgetting what women are like? You, go, can, you can tell my position. My position is very managerial. But as I think as um, Charles said it just now, no matter what a mother is uh, nurturing, our first instinct is to nurture, not to manage, not to be objective. It's to be nurture. And I was seeing this, 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 this ability or tendency in my sister yesterday. We were having this discussion. But without this, this process, none of us will grow to be what we ought to be in this terrain. This is a very, what's called the hurt rams, especially since it fall. It is a very difficult, you know, it's like it said in, um, in, in Songs of Solomon. Um, you understand? I am a rose, amen, from the valley of Sharon. It was an abandoned place. You understand? Where, you understand, to grow is very difficult. In the valley of Sharon, it is the place, we understand, where, where turn or cast away rose grow in very difficult circumstance or condition. That sums up the earth realms. It is a lot of fall, not a lot, everyone has fallen, everyone is dysfunction. Imagine, you know, we all have limbs. If you ever see like a, a snake or anything die, let's say it get cut in half. You ever see what the body does after it cut in half? It flaps around, it lashes around, that's out of control. The world is like that. There's a whole lot of dysfunctional souls that are just what? Flapping around, hitting themselves, hitting each other, hurting themselves, hurting each other. This is how. And we call it civilized, but from God's perspective, you see it as a fall, dysfunctional world. But even being in that state, mothers are exceptional because mothers are nurturous. A man might carry the spermatozer, you understand? The, the cell that brings forth life. But he cannot nurture it. You see, he must pass it to a woman. No cell has the ability to nurture what? Itself. Itself. It can't multiply on its own. You see, and as you pass the spermatozoa to a woman, she has the ability to nurture it to what becomes a beautiful kaya. She will give it an environment that supports it, that nurtures it. She'll give it an environment that allows the cells to what? Multiply and grow and do nutrition. Her blood does not mix with, it, with the baby's blood, but yet she nurtures it. So from the beginning, from the time she received that spermatozoa, you see, our mother nurturing characteristic immediately what? Kicks in. She looks to protect it and provide for it and give it the space and the room and the environment to make it the best it can be. Right off the bat. And when this process continues to when she gives birth, she continues to nurture it, breastfeed it and protect it and change it. Our natural instinct at all levels, even when the child is 60, is to what? Nurture. Nurturing is always simply come from this perspective. What do you need to be better? What do you need to be in a better place to grow? What do you need to be protected? Our instinct is always to nurture, to meet the need or the demand at hand. A man don't quite work that way. 
It works like, you understand? These are what we need and what do we have to eliminate or get in place to make it work. <laughs> she don't quite think that way. She don't care like this is falling apart or that or this is not working. Like what do they need right now to survive? It is why they say you give her a spermatosa, you understand? She will give you a child. She will nurture it until that baby become nine months nurture and she'll offer back to you a son or a daughter. You give her a husband and she will give you a family. She can nurture. What you give her, she is truly the opposite of the man that hides his talent in the ground. Anything you give her, she can what? Multiply. She can work with it. You give her a husband, she'll give you a family. You give her a house, she'll make a home. You give her some produce or provision, she'll make you a meal. You understand this process. She nurtures what you give to her. When she's dysfunctional, dysfunctional for a woman is this. She's lacking the ability to nurture. When she's destroying things you give her, it's because somehow something is blocking her ability to nurture, to enhance what you give her, to multiply it, to convert it. Our power of nurturing is to convert. And without her being here, amen, God using her as an instrument, the nurturing we need in such a difficult terrain that we live in, like the Rose of Sharon, none of us would have made it. Because we need tremendous nurturing to what? To get to where we are. We must be nurtured right off the bat. Every stage of our life we need nurturing. Until she eventually give her that which she has been nurturing to the best level of our ability back to Jesus, which is the spring of true life to nurture you back as a whole. Amen? It is why, for instance, you see, we dedicate babies back. Because even the nurturer goes, I can nurture, but without you, I, don't know what you need I cannot sustain the demand that the fetus need to come all the way through. Do you understand this process? <laughs> the, the man, the man is more like a leader. Yes. He's more, he's more like, like, let's move ahead, uh, not acknowledging what you need now. But, Correct. Right. He would, if he's, he's, a, more, he's objective he's driven. More, he's more forward minded. Yes, he's yeah. very objective. Yeah. He'll go, we have to get to Scarborough. Yeah. It didn't matter you didn't sleep or eat in three weeks. All he see, we have to get to Scarborough. It takes her to go, you can't push these people these hard. You can't drive, it can't be that hard on the children, you're going to break them. Yes. They have to eat or sleep. Yes. The, the nurture of mind works yes. completely different. Yes. The object becomes secondary, nurturing becomes primary. With a man, the objection is primary and the nurturing is secondary. The man kind of works this way. When we get there, you can get what you need. You can eat or sleep. Exactly. The woman does not work. She goes, if we do not nurture them now, we will never get there. Hence why there's such a wonderful balance. Amen. Do you understand this? What I do know because of her nurturing spirit, if she was not there, and especially without the man is wired, who just is object driven, none of us will get there. Do you understand? It is typical to know this in the man in a man's world that in the process of what he or she what he is after, he destroys everything. Now when he gets there, he can't what? Enjoy it. His body is falling apart, he has lost all the relationship with everybody because he is very object. You understand? Driven. But you look, I got the task done. The task is completely done, God. But me and everyone else is absolutely worn out. Do you understand what I'm saying? What nurturing you talking about? Ah, eating. I have a friend, he goes in. Ah, eating is for suckers. <laughs> That's what he said. He doesn't eat, he goes on. He just go and go. And he goes, eating is for suckers. Suckers like to eat. He goes, but objective people, ah, you don't have time to eat and sleep. You can sleep when you're dead. Y yes, he goes, when you die, you can sleep. <laughs> it is the ultimate opposite of a nurturer. It doesn't matter. Most... Wife will testify to this. Then the mother-in-law have problems with this. <laughs> because a mother-in-law is a nurturer. So when our son comes home, immediately, you look skinny. Have you been eating? Have you been sleeping? It drives the wife bananas. Guys, it makes her feel, are you telling me I'm inadequate? Like I can't take care of my husband? <laughs> 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 
But don't blame her. She can't help herself. She is a nurturer. And what she see when she see her son, you understand? What she see when she see her son is not a married son who have a wife. She sees a son that lack in nurturing. Do you understand? Deficient of nurturing from her standards and her way. Because her nurturing skills kicks in right away. I was talking to my sister yesterday, we dealing with a man, and I'm, me and she's wrestling on this matter for a, like two dogs and a bone. But she has one perspective. I don't care what's going on, what needs to be done. I just want to nurture. I just want to nurture. You know, and I'm going like, I get you all the nurture, but they're objective. We got to get to these objective. You know, and we're going to get to these objective. And she's like, but I, I'm just going to nurture. It is the way. In my perspective, I eliminate nurturing if necessary to get to the objective. From her perspective, I don't care about the objective. Long as they are, nurture. So this typically drives, as I said, married woman, the other go, your mother don't like me. I'm like, you, you're a big man. Why does your mom treat you like a child? She can't help. From her perspective, you understand? Our baby is always, unless she is taking care of him at 60, mm. deficient of nurturing. Not getting enough sleep, enough eating, you know. He can be the most successful. Are you okay? You've been sleeping. They're not working you too hard at work. You, you know, you go to bed on time. He's 60. You know, if you figure it by now, you'll never what? Figure it out. <laughs> Do you understand it? If he didn't get it by 30, 35, he probably won't get it. Do you understand what I'm saying? He probably won't get it. Do you understand? This is a, typically, he'll have kids, he'll have a wife, he's successful. It doesn't matter. She see him as, as a person or a thing that still needs what? Nurture in. She views everything from, you want to make a woman feel useless? Yeah. Give her nothing to nurture. She will utterly become useless. Give her nothing to nurture. Do you understand this? As I learned this principle, I might establish something, but I quickly get my wife on it to what? Sustain it through Christ. Do you understand this principle? Because I know I am objectively driven. I go from one task to the next. So if I want it to stay, not just to start something and destroy it, I must immediately switch, switch on the nurturer up, on it. Because she will see its deficiency and maintain it through Jesus Christ. Do you understand this process? So I just want to thank God in this realm through Jesus for all the nurturers. If you didn't nurture us in spermatosa mode, we would not have get there. As a fetus, we would not have get there. As a child, amen. As a teenager, every stage need nurture. Nurture us to get ready to be husbands and wives and ministers and brothers and sisters. Amen. 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 To the very end, it is that spirit the Lord that administer within you mm -hmm. to support, to encourage, to nurture. Mm -hmm. Amen. It is one thing to establish, to start something, a family, a home, a business. Amen. Amen. A new routine Amen. in your life, reading your Bible. One thing I know without, like fertilizer and water, water and fertilizer what? nurtures, they encourage you. Mm -hmm. I know none of us will make it. Not when the terrain is so hard and an opposer so hard trying to suppress it. He suppresses. Mm -hmm. He stops things from what? Growing. Mm -hmm. But a nurturer enhanced thing like water. Today I want to recognize all the nurturers in the church and in the body of Christ. Amen. We thank God for your life. Amen. We salute the spirit within you in the name of Jesus Amen. for nurturing that which God has placed into your hands. Amen. Do you understand this? Amen. When the spirit, God is Alpha and Omega, Amen. And he is male and female. He's El Shaddai. When the spirit of God comes into you, you become both one. Nurturer and leader. Both happen. Do you understand? This is why Christ said, in me, there is no male, no, no female. female. Mm -hmm. He got in me, in body what? Boat. Mm -hmm. 
I can nurture and I can lead. Amen. But that's provided you let him lead and nurture. He can do it. You can't. Don't mix it up. He can. You cannot. Amen? Now, please grab a pen quickly. I'll wrap this up in one minute. I don't want. I don't want you to. That's a Twitter of a Bible close by. I don't want you to. Um, I don't want to set you up that you can't do this properly. In fact, God will deal with me. Thank you, my brother. This is a blessing, and I'm going to call forth a prophetic blessing upon the nurturers this morning. I'm speaking twofold this morning: part physical, part prophetic. The prophetic part meaning you have, this is to the church. The prophetic part is strictly to the church. It meaning you have received Christ who is both male and female, which means you can nurture and you can lead. Hallelujah. Physically, I'm recognizing women throughout the ranks. Yeah. Does this make sense? Yeah. If you have a pen, write this down. For those, I'll start with those that are married. If you want to be effective, number one, number one, um, First, I'll speak general, then I'll speak um, prophetic. Amen. If you want to be effective, first I'll speak to the marriage people. You need a priority, something like this, to be effective. Number one, you need God need to be your number one focus point where all your energy, time, and resource go if you're going to be effective. So God is one. Number two, if your marriage has to be a marriage, you have to learn to work on your marriage that you can work together. You will not be able to go forward if the two of you are not moving in the same direction. The Bible said two can only walk together if they are in what? Agreement. agreement. So you wouldn't be able to go forward. Only God can put you in agreement. He makes the two one. And if the marriage two are not in agreement, you wouldn't be able to go forward. So one is God. This is priority. I call it priority of effective living. God is one, marriage is two. Typically when two become one, they'll create a family. Family has to become three. The family must work then in God's ministry. The church become number four. Family is created, amen, to administer for God, to serve God. Amen? It's like hiring an employee. It's to work for a company, not to just have fun. In the church, your work become four or your profession. What you're going to use become number four. Uh, number five, sorry. So God, one, marriage, two, family, three, church, four. Work become number five. And last, the world, or the field, the Bible calls it, becomes number six. If you mix up this priority, you're going to have challenges. If your one is the world, or your one is work, do you understand this? Or your, or your one is the world, your work is two, you see? If this, if, this, if this process is reversed, your life is going to be dysfunctional. You will not be affected. It must go God, marriage, family, church, profession, or works. Feel the world, the place you move around in. You better see your sojourning, your past through. So if your priority is the world and work, don't be surprised of the dysfunction in your life. Do you make sense? Does you, you got it? Mm -hmm. Now for the non-marriage people, the only thing different is the non-marriage. God is one, family is two, church is three, work is four, and the feel is five. This is how your priority should work. When you look at your life, if your time, energy, and resource is not flowing around there, you will not be affected. At least, please don't be surprised. Don't go, well, I'm surprised this is not working. Please don't be like that. Understand why you're ineffective. God has to be your one. Amen? Family has to be, can you need support? Amen? And so forth. A lot of times your church family and your family life should merge. There should be one big family. Amen? Amen. Now quickly, I just want to give you this scripture so you understand to make, for God to work in this process, something has to happen. So I just want to give you two scriptures you should meditate on. I'll read them quickly. If not, though you have God, it will not be effective. One is Hebrews chapter 8. You don't have to go there. I'll read it for you, but I do want you to write it down. Hebrews chapter 8, 8 to 12 reads this way quickly. However, he finds fault with them, showing its inadequacy. When he said, Behold, the day will come, say the Lord, when I will make and ratify a new covenant or agreement with the house of Israel 
and with the house of Judah. God was finding fault with the, old, the way they were, the relationship they were having with him, and he said, I'm going to set up a new covenant. Verse 9 said, It will not be like the covenant that I made with their forefathers on the day when I grasped them by the hands and helped and, and, and relieved them and to lead them out from the land of Egypt. For they did not abide in my agreement with them. And so I withdraw my favor and disregard them, say the Lord. I told you guys many times, God is loving, but not reckless. If you will not abide, God will release you. Do you understand this? God said, I make a covenant, but they will not abide, so I withdraw my fever, and I disregard them. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, if, if salvation is revocable, but if you will not abide in him, do you understand me? You will lose the favor. Mm -hmm. You're still his child, but you don't get none of it. Thanks. Favor. Jesus, even in the physical world, mm -hmm. I can never stop a child that is mine from being my child, but that don't mean I'll support what he or she what? No, does. does. If they will not abide in how I live my life or I would like them, you understand? They are my child, but I will not support what they do. Mm -hmm. God does the same. He said, I withdraw my favor and disregard them. Because mm -hmm. they did not stay in, in the relationship. Mm -hmm. Verse 10 said, For this is the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, say the Lord. I will imprint my laws upon their mind, even upon their inmost thoughts, and understanding and engrave them upon their heart and I will be their God and they shall be my people and it will never more amen, and it will never more be necessary for each one to teach his neighbor and his fellow citizen or each one his brother saying no perceive have knowledge of get acquainted by experience with the Lord for all will know me Amen? From the smallest to the greatest. When God give you Jesus, it's, to, it's for others to stop having to point out Jesus to you all the time. Why many of us sometimes, people go, I can't hear the voice of the Lord. It's simply this. You don't know to abide. Mm. Where Christ has placed you, you don't know to stay. So therefore, your brother or sister who know how to stay got to constantly what? Help you. Which is what they're there to do. Because God said if they don't, he hold them accountable. But when you are placed into Christ, my point is, you have the nurturer and the lead. Mm -hmm. Providing you know how to stay so you don't lose the favor Amen. and be disregarded. Amen. Because if you can't abide, God stop talking. Why do you talk to someone that don't stand around when you talk? What is the point? Do you understand? Any preacher this. You don't preach to people without faith. Do you understand? If you, do you talk to people who don't pay attention? God okay. wants the same. He's not useless. He's very, very effective. And verse 12 said, For I will be merciful and gracious towards their sin, and I will remember their deeds of unrighteousness no more. Amen. The secret is God has positioned and we have to abide. Amen. It is the same scripture like the other one I just want you to remember. I can't read that now. It's John chapter, 1 John chapter 2. The Bible says you need no one to teach you. You have the sacred option. Amen. Providing you what? Abide. Abide. God doesn't talk to people that don't stay where he tells them to. Stay. Amen. He withdraws the favor and disregards them. You have to abide. And when you say, well, Lord, you're not talking to me or I can't hear you. He goes, you don't listen. Mm -hmm. You don't listen. Do you understand this? When you listen, you abide. Amen. Abide meaning like the instruction I get, I stick by it. Amen. I don't justify it. Hallelujah. I don't change it. I don't alter it. Amen. Temptation is simply this. I must pull you out from the place where God tells you to be and stay. Amen. Independent is simply this. I want to do my own thing because I don't want nobody to tell me what to do and when to do it. Amen. Amen. Write down this scripture. This is the to also keep in mind when you get some time, read it. First John chapter 2, from 20 to 27. It is the same idea. God puts his law in you, and he wants you to abide in it. If you can do this, you will hear God talking to you. You will not be disregarded, and the favor of God will flow. Amen. Then the nurturer and the lead will be there. 
Every Christian has the nurture and the lead. Not many gains the favor of it or the benefit of it because they cannot abide. You understand? And they cannot be obedient. Do you understand? Uh, they said that little priority church should help you to do that. If God is your priority, amen, being one, your family, your church, your work, and then the field, I believe you'll be effective. I believe if it's not set up something similar like that, you'll be very ineffective. Amen? We will do locally. You know, we'll, we, 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 will, we will need always our mothers and our fathers, the leaders, and our pastors and teachers, but you yourself who have the anointing will not be effective. Amen? So I therefore decree the twofold blessing. We are grateful for all the nurturers. Without you, we would not have made it. Amen? And I am grateful for the greatest nurturer and lead, which is the, the anointed, the sacred option within us that will carry us on into eternity in Jesus' name.